All right, I'm really excited about this next interview. We were hearing from the Department of Natural Resources about research they're doing on moose here in our state. So I am joined now live by Rachel Lincoln with the Department of Natural Resources. Rachel, thanks so much for joining us here on Evening Plus. Yes, thank you for having me. I know you and I have been talking for a couple of weeks about this interview, um, and we've got some pictures that we're going to show in just a moment of what exactly is happening. But the DNR is doing research on moose here in our state. What exactly is being studied? How does this work? Give us kind of the whole rundown of what this project is about. Yeah, absolutely. So in mid February of this year, we started this new collaborative research project with a couple of partners. So Michigan DNR and the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community and Northern Michigan University uh, set off to capture and radio collar 20 moose across Michigan's Upper Peninsula with the hopes of better understanding some of the challenges that are facing our moose population. Um, so it's been a really exciting start to this multi-year project. And basically we're trying to look at what is limiting our population of moose from growing. Yeah, and so as far as sort of where this came from, um, you know, do we have a diminished moose population here in Michigan? Was that sort of one of the propellers for this research? So there is quite a long history of moose here in Michigan. Um, we had a really successful reintroduction of moose to uh, the Upper Peninsula in the mid 1980s. And since then we have seen this steady growth in our wild moose population. But over the last couple of decades, that growth rate has really slowed to only one to 2% annually. And so it seems to have really stagnated or plateaued mm. right at about 450 animals. Um, and the time has come now for us to try to better understand why that plateau has happened. Yeah, absolutely. And we have some pictures we're going to show here in just a moment of what this work has looked like. You see the collar there on the one moose and you're going to see some pictures of them after they've been just temporarily put to sleep. Um, but Rachel, talk to me about what this project actually looks like, you know, capturing the moose, studying them, putting these collars on, um, you know, obviously they are then brought back awake and, you know, sent on their merry way. But what does this kind of look like when people are seeing these pictures of this work? Yeah, so it is quite the feat of logistics that went into this capture and uh, collaring project. And really, it was an amazing operation to watch. Um, I had the honor of helping to document this whole thing and was able to watch it aerially and from the ground. So it really was fantastic to see. Uh, but essentially, it all starts with a plane. So we have these planes that fly above our core moose range in the Upper Peninsula. And really, that covers the Barraga Marquette counties. And so this plane flies. And of course, moose are really big, right? So you can <laughs> see them aerially um, at kind of low flight elevation. So these planes would fly above the core range. And when they identified a moose, they would then radio a helicopter that would move in super swiftly and sedate the moose from the helicopter and then get out of the area so that the moose could fall into sedation while it was very calm and quiet without the hustle and bustle of helicopters or people around. And then once the moose was fully sedated, ground crews would come in and they would affix a GPS collar to the moose and collect biological samples. So we collected blood, fecal and hair samples, as well as some parasite samples. So we pulled a couple ticks off of those moose. Um, and all of that information is going to go into our scientific model that helps us to kind of track and monitor the population trends for moose. But it also gives us an inside look to their health and condition, as well as pregnancy rates. And now that they have those collars attached to them, we actually are getting GPS locations of those moose every hour. And so it gives us a really good idea of where moose are moving to and from and the habitats that they are living in. And it will also give us an idea of moose mortality, because if we're going to study the population dynamics, we have to better understand mortality. So what causes these moose to die, but also pregnancy rates mm. and their ability to reproduce. And so with all of that data we collected during the capture and collar, operation, it'll all feed into helping us better understand the dynamics of the moose population. So interesting. And I can only imagine what it's like to, you know, put these collars on the on the moose and, you know, take those different samples. You know, this is, you know, not a dog we're talking about, but a moose that is so large. And I know this work really only just started a couple of months ago, as you mentioned. Have you guys, you know, made any sort of significant findings or is it really in those sort of preliminary stages any big things you've noticed about the animal you know here in Michigan? 
<laughs> uh, moose move a lot <laughs> um, is, is our first takeaway. We really still are in the preliminary stages. We've only put 20 collars out. We do plan to put more collars out next year where we'll put uh, 40 more collars out mm. on moose. And at this time, we're just tracking their locations. So like I mentioned, we get a new data point, a new location every hour. And so really we're just tracking these moose and seeing where they go. And it has been really fascinating to see um, how far moose will move or how restricted they will stay to some locations. Um, but really we're just kind of watching to see how these, these reaction or how these collars are going to report their locations. And if you're able, you know, to answer this question, you know, people are hearing about this. Okay, cool. You know, we're studying moose here in Michigan. How does this impact in any way? You know, you and I, obviously we're not, you know, I'm not interacting with a moose every day or, or seeing them here in Grand Rapids, but doing this kind of work, um, you know, has so many purposes, as you mentioned, how does this, you know, kind of research sort of impact, you know, people living here in our state? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of different ways, but probably most significantly, especially for those of us who live in the Grand Rapids area, is moose are a symbol of wildness for Michigan, right? Like we think of the Upper Peninsula, you cross the bridge and you immediately start seeing the iconic moose silhouette. It's everywhere. It's representative. You've got big evergreen forests and then you've got moose and all of the other cool natural features that the Upper Peninsula has. And people who live in Michigan, especially in the Upper Peninsula, love moose. We've consistently heard from the public as well as our conservation partners, how is the moose population? What are the moose in the UP doing? And so for all of us, we get to learn just a little bit more about what makes our Michigan moose herd healthy and what mm. we can do to help support it. Um, but also moose have extreme uh, cultural significance for many of our indigenous communities in mm. Michigan. Moose are culturally important to them. And then ecologically as well, we don't have moose down here in the lower peninsula, but in the upper peninsula, uh, moose are significant because they are our largest herbivores. They eat mm. a lot of trees. And because they're eating trees, they can literally shape forests. And whether they are present or absent, can have really big impacts on how the forest functions as well as the wildlife that live within. So for all of these reasons, um, whether you get to see them or you've never seen one, you know, they really are important to Michigan as a state and also the natural resources we have here. So cool. I was so excited for this interview and I knew I was going to learn a ton and I definitely did. Um, we are going to post this whole interview, of course, up on our YouTube page as well. If people would like to watch again or, you know, hear what you had to say. Um, Rachel, we so appreciate you joining us here on Evening Plus and breaking down this research. And like you said, this is something that's going to continue into next year. So we will be sure to keep tabs on all the great work you guys are doing at the DNR. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. You have a good night.